Hi, I'm Kara. I'm American, but I was uh, born and raised in Japan, um, and I've been in Lithuania for about nine years, longer than I ever lived in the in the U.S. I was born in Japan because my dad was born in Japan, because his parents were missionaries there for 50 years. I grew up in the church. I was saved when I was five years old. Not to say that's not significant, but it's not very exciting. I mean, I remember the day. I was at church with my Sunday school teacher. Um, I remember the conversation. I, rem I can picture it all. And since then, I've been at the church. Um, I've been following Christ. I've been growing in Him. Um, even when I've questioned or rebelled, I never really got too far off the path. So I always thought that that's just not a very exciting story to tell. But a few months ago I was reading in Kings and something stood out to me that actually changed the way I view my testimony. So in Kings it lists all of these kings and how one followed God and then when he died his son became king and he followed God and he died and his son became king and uh, maybe he didn't, maybe he got off the path. But then he died and his son came in and, and then followed God. And this idea of just this generational, this legacy of faithfulness and following Christ, that really stood out to me. And I realized I don't actually know how far my legacy goes back, but I grew up in church. Uh, it was a very easy decision for me to follow God because I grew up in church. And I did that because my parents grew up in church. And they did that because their parents grew up in church. And, and I don't know how far it goes back, but I'm assuming at some point, one of my ancestors made that personal decision to follow God. And I'm the result of that. So it's been pretty easy for me. I haven't had to struggle with my faith like a lot of people because of that generational blessing. Now, one thing growing up in the church that I that I always felt that of course you never know the impact that you that you leave but I wanted to know that I led one other person to Christ I wanted to know that when I leave this earth I'm taking one more person with me I felt like if I couldn't do that then my life was pointless and I actually had the opportunity to do that when I was in university and the person I introduced to the Lord is here, and I'll let them introduce themselves. So I will tell a slightly different story from what you've heard. In general, I grew up non-Christian, and I came from a very broken decades of divorce, decades of just different moral standards, and my story getting to know Jesus starts ironically at a Christian university because that's where I started my bachelor's degree. In general, growing up I was I never knew what Christianity is or what God is because I just my focus was not there. I didn't I didn't per se have the capacity of knowing that. And at my university Fully knowing that the university has strong Christian uh, values, uh, I still applied and I got accepted. And consequently, for first year students, we needed to take required Bible classes. And to be honest, not only the first experience was because it was a Christian university, but because those two required Bible classes that we needed to take because the very first class sparked an interest and it was my first ever experience opening a Bible. Even though it was in English, it was interesting because I never knew that this happened and I never knew that this person whom, uh, who was called Jesus, he gave his life for me. So I, I raised questions. I, um, I encounter, encountered people whom I asked what's about this like why why i didn't know about this and to be honest first my experiences with other people were quite rough quite harmful just because i was curious and at the same time i was very straightforward asking such questions of how can you how can you read this and you can believe in this but to be honest i i understood why <laughs> 
the more I dwelled in the Bible, the more I read the Bible, uh, the more I asked questions, the more he was appearing to me. And uh, one of the biggest, uh, I think, change happened when I first time prayed. I was agnostic, uh, so didn't really, I knew that something is out there and feeling it, but I couldn't reach that. And I decided for the first time in my life to pray, which I didn't know how to do. I didn't know what the process or how, where it needs to be done. And I did it because I was going through a rough path, a quite complex path with my family. Life was not so pleasant. And I just simply asked, if you were there, please uh, show up because I need your help. So in that uh, case, he brought my wife. Back then she was my friend <laughs> uh, and she took, she took all the punches. <laughs> she, but she stood, uh, she stood there. And I think God was telling her, just be patient. Just be patient with him, even though it's rough, even though it's difficult, just be patient. And I thank him that he was patient with, with me, with her. And eventually I, I accepted the Lord as my savior. And what I can say that because his presence was so clear, I just know that he's real. And uh, I hope that I will be able to show this to my kids. Now I can start the decades of continuous faith and and just focus on him so that others who are coming after us that they could just continue in that path now you've heard how our stories merge um, and i think our point is that when you are thinking about believing or not believing you might think of it as a personal decision and it absolutely is but you really can never know the legacy that you leave and the impact that you leave. So because someone some generation ago made that personal decision, it set the path for my life and it changed the course of his life. And now together, our three kids are going to hopefully be raised in the church and have the opportunity to make the decision when they're ready. and we will hopefully contrib contribute to future generation after generation after generation and ultimately world domination.